my friend Oh Lord From home, oh Lord. All right, that was a little bit of Hobo Blues by John Lee Hooker. And we will be wrapping up our series on the Mississippi Hill Country Artist, which we started back with Mississippi Fred McDowell in June. And into fall, we carried over onto R.L. Burnside, and we're going to uh, wrap up with John Lee Hooker. I'll be presenting two lessons. This is in conjunction with my uh, John Lee Hooker ebook, Volume 1, which is available for free on my website if you locate the link on the information settings in a in a section on my website called free downloads it's a PDF it's a very neatly organized in my ebook format just to give you an indication of what my ebooks look like so I thought it was important that we that we sort of dabble with John Lee Hooker uh, because his style is uh, the artists R.L. Burnside and Miss Mississippi Fred McDowell, they're also influenced by John Lee Hooker. So I felt like he was the first in that area to gain wide notoriety and exposure. He became very popular ahead of the two other artists that I mentioned. Um, the reason that I wanted to play this is because A, it's an open tuning and John Lee Hooker is also recycling and using some of the things that we've been learning these past six months, this past fall and summer. All of the links, the pull-offs, the bass runs, they appear in this song as well and I wanted to uh, put it all together for you to learn. Hobo Blues is an excellent song, um, definitely one of my favorite John Lee Hooker songs indeed. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, before we continue, thank you again for all your support on um, subscribing to me on YouTube, liking me on Facebook. Um, you're helping me on my mission to preserve this great music. So I'm happy to create this mini ebook that's free for download as a treat to all of you guys. All right, so um, straight to the playing. In order to play this song, we got to tune our guitars together. So Hobo Blues is played in open G tuning, yet it is tuned one whole step up. So if your guitar is in E standard tuning, you won't have to do much um, uh, changing with the strings on the machine head. So if you have the tablature or the ebook available with you, that's a great start. It's very easy to understand and follow me if you have that. If you haven't already, check out my website and download the book for free. It's a PDF file, have that out with you and follow along as I'm playing. The first, the top string is going to actually be an E. So if you're already uh, tuned in standard E tuning, you just gotta stay on the E. I'm gonna play the top string, it's an E. Go ahead and tune on your end. My second string is going to be an A. Again, no change from E standard. Now, my fourth string is going to be an E. So you're going from a D to an E. So you'll have to uh, change your machine heads and go up one whole step. This is my E. This, um, my third string is going to be an A. So you're going from a G to an A. My second string is going to be a C sharp. You're going from a B to a C sharp. My bottom string is going to be an E.
And when you strum it all together, it sounds like this. Now, if you followed my um, lessons thus far, um, you'll notice that I like to apply on the right hand a technique, and it's playing the this sort of this motion with the hand, cocking it like this, having your thumb rest on the fifth string in order to play the bass components, and your index and middle finger are going to be um, pinching together, playing the melodies on the first, second, and third strings. And I go into great detail uh, about this holding pattern in uh, When My First Wife Left Me by Arl uh, Burnside. That lesson, I go into great detail about positioning there. So that's how you have it here. The type of guitar that you want, it doesn't matter in this case. I have an acoustic guitar. Uh, you can play it with an electric, it doesn't matter. I like to use plastic finger picks because I don't have hands like these artists. My hands are uh, feeble and so I have these uh, finger picks to produce, uh, to produce crisp notes when I strike the chords. Okay. All right, so moving along forward, we've, we're tuned together, we're in the open tuning, and please, if you haven't already, download the book with you, and I'm going to go over the first measure here, and um, it's something that appears already in a lot of R.L. Burnside's music, which we've covered this past fall, it shows up here as well. So let's take a quick break before we go into the introduction, and um, I'll see you there. All right, the introduction in this song uh, encompasses a lot of elements that reappear in the stanzas and in the verses to come. Uh, so what he does is he starts off by playing this, this kind of lick. This is a typical John Lee Hooker lick, and he plays it across much of his repertoire in open tunings. And we already kind of covered this in uh, When My First Wife Left Me, my R.L. Burnside lesson. If you haven't checked that out, be sure to do so. So what he's doing here is you're finding, um, you have your position on the right hand like this, the thumb is uh, situated on the fifth string, and your index finger is going to be plucking the first and second strings as you play this figure here and it's going to be a series of five notes and the first note is going to start on this it's going to be a slide into the third fret starting on the first fret second string you play that and start sliding to the second fret into the third fret you play the first three notes like that one two three and then with your middle finger you play the bottom string on the third fret and then with your index finger, you pluck them together. So in that introduction, he plays this portion six times. Eventually, you can go from the second to the uh, third fret. So that's all he does there. And then he also plays that in, in the verse in the song when he goes, When I first got the whole boy and whole boy and boys. He sits on that lick as well, which we'll cover later on in the song. So to wrap up that lick, if you have the tablature with you, he ends this lick by playing this sort of um, ascending scale upwards. It will go like this. kind of uh, similar to the licks we, le we were learning in R.L. Burnside's music. So to play that lick, what you're going to do, it's a series of uh, seven notes. The first three notes will start like this. You're going to find the fifth string, bottom string on the fifth string. Play that once. Go to the third fret bottom string. Then the bottom string open. Okay. One, two, three. But you play it like this. It's like a uh, pull off. One, two, three. Then you go to the second string, first fret. Play that. 
then play that open, then end on the third string open, and then uh, end that whole thing on the fifth string open. So the seven notes in all will be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But you can play it with the index finger. And then the thumb plays that open string on the fifth string. And again, it's this, the positioning on the right hand that's important. Now, it, later on in the introduction, it gets a little bit complicated, but we get into an area of John Lee Hooker's music where he's playing his signature, uh, it's sort of, he's holding this four chord position, which I cover later on in the song, it's like a half version of it. And this is also what I was talking about in Arl Burnside's music, it's this, it's this position where you have your index finger position on the first fret second string right so you have that position there holding there and in this next uh, portion of the introduction he plays this uh, very interesting melody and it's gonna go like this Uh, and then the 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 first the finger here can be situated on the first fret. As a way to position yourself. But what we're gonna do is if you have the tablature with you, let's look at that second measure. And you're gonna find the thumb is gonna be hovering on the third fret open string, and you're gonna play this sequence. It's a sequence of four notes that go like this. You start on the open string, third string, play the third fret, third string, as your second note, open, third fret, then you go down to the second string, first fret, then play the second string open. Those four notes he plays in sequence twice, and it'll be like this. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, four. All right. One, two, three, four. <clears throat> and then it, he just keeps playing this figure like this. He plays that, uh, like two and a half times in a row. And then the next part of that, he, he goes to the third fret, uh, second string. And then he, he plays the third fret, second string. Also with the, um, he plays the third string open together with that. And then he goes into this, he moves up the neckboard to the second fret, second string, to the first fret, uh, second string. Playing those two, playing those two strings, the second and third strings together in sequence. So together it will sound like this. And he has this hand on this position. It's this four chord position that I was sort of talking about in the R.L. Burnside lessons for when my first wife left me. The two are very similar. The, the difference is that John Lee Hooker likes playing these notes on the second fret, second, second fret, second string. And this shows up in Crawling Kingsnake, 
It's something that distinguishes himself from R.L. Burnside. R.L. Burnside was in this position, he's always on the third fret. But John Lee Hooker, the difference is he's playing notes on the second fret. So the rest of that measure will sound like this. And, that, and the next, after this portion, he'll play five notes that sound like this. And the, those five notes will be the open string on the third string, the third fret, third string, then the first fret, second string, second string open, then the third string open. One, two, three, four, five. So that melody will be like this. One, um, from the beginning, And you can play uh, the second and third strings together in unison across that whole melody. It's very easy to follow along when you have the tablature laid out in front of you. All right, so that's really the kind of trickiest part. And this, uh, this sort of melody finds itself in the um, second stanza in the song. He plays a variation of this as well. So we'll cover that a little bit uh, later on in the segment. So let's go to the next.